I didn't want to be just another starving artist eating, you know, ramen and cardboard here in New York City. I wanted mm-hmm. to be comfortable doing this while I was doing this and be, and this is my big word, my buzzword as a VO strategist, be effective. You know, there's talent and then there's effectiveness. Mm-hmm. You can be very talented, but if you're not effective as a voice actor, your talent means nothing. So I want to be effective and relevant in the voiceover industry. And from my perspective, the best way to do that is to understand principles of business and marketing. I got my training. I got my demo. I got my website. I got my recording studio. Now what? Mm-hmm. Right. VO strategist is the now what? Now that you've now that you've equipped yourself, now you can get out there and 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 be effective. George the Tech. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. And another in our series of our trusted partner interviews. And today with us to share with you what he does, who he is, and what he has to offer to you, our listeners and our viewers and our clients. I have with me Tom Deere. How are you doing, Tom? I'm good, George. How are you? Excellent, buddy. Where in the world are you? I am in Midtown Manhattan, right in the heart of it. What a cool place. Are you far from Hell's Kitchen? Hell's Kitchen is literally across the street. I'm on 34th Street. And if you are one inch south of 34th Street, you're in Chelsea. And if you're on the other side of the street, you're in Hell's Kitchen. So I'm right on the border of Midtown South, Manhattan West, Hudson Yards, Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea. How do you record a voiceover in an apartment in Midtown Manhattan? That's a very good question. Okay. Behind me, not over here, behind those two doors go to the very, very, very quaint postcard-sized kitchen. But that door that has the jackets hanging off it, that is the front closet of my apartment. That is my recording booth. So when I sit, I sit that way. So my back is to that wall. So the concrete wall is behind me. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting at a, it's literally a snack tray covered with a towel, a beach Mm -hmm. towel. It works great. My Sennheiser 416, which as you know, has a very tight field. I, I, I come up with a new word for that. I call it the portrait lens for voice. Portrait lens for voice. I like that. Okay. Right, because with cameras, you really need to use the right lens for someone right. to be flat, to, to be flattering. Like you don't take portraits with a wide-angle lens, right? right? So there you go. There's my there's a little tip for you guys. I like that. <laughs> so so yes, the portrait lens of that is my four sixteen. But the good news is that the windows. This is a sixty plus year old building, but the windows are very new and they're mm. very very well sealed. Good. So when I've got the windows closed, I'm in the closet. The door is closed. My noise floor is in the minus mid 50s. So I'm That's recording great. and booking. I've been in this apartment for over six years. I have not had a single complaint about my audio quality from a uh, treatment perspective. Not a and single And that all issue. is to say about you, Tom, is that you're not about flashiness. You're not about overspending. You're not about you know the glam of whatever show business or whatever you want to call this. You're all about practical stuff, obviously. Practical solutions, things that work. So that leads me to you. So tell us about yourself and how you came to this coaching program you have to offer for our clients. My first presentation was October 2011. So we're talking 12 and a half years ago. And I did a presentation at a voiceover conference. And my understanding is that it was one of the first, if not the first, business and marketing related presentations about the voiceover industry from a voice actor's perspective. As a Mm -hmm. result of that presentation, where I talked about how to write a business plan as a voice actor, as a result of that, I, within a couple of weeks, I got picked up by one of the voiceover schools in our industry, and I started teaching as a business and marketing instructor. So I started teaching monthly webinars. And I would also have individual students where I would talk about the business and marketing aspect of the voiceover industry. The reason why I'm proficient at it is because I'm very left-brained. I'm very analytical. I love spreadsheets. I love office supplies. I attack things from a very data-driven, tactical point of view. But I'm also very creative. I'm a theater trained actor, you know, and all that and all that stuff. I'm one of those rare voice actors who has some heavy left brain action going on. Also, I have come from a corporate background. I used to work for, strangely enough, Bennigan's restaurants, where I used to travel the country opening Bennigan's restaurants. So I would be Mm -hmm. one of the trainers. So I would train dozens of staff members, waiters mostly, but also hosts. And then eventually I was training the trainers 
So you had to be extremely organized and you needed to be proficient in guided discussion where you would be teaching groups of people on how to be proficient in a, in a subject. Mm -hmm. So between my creativity, my corporate presentation experience, my analytical data-driven mind, I also really wanted to be successful in voiceover. I didn't want to be just another starving artist eating, you know, ramen and cardboard here in New York City. I wanted mm -hmm. to be comfortable doing this while I was doing this and be, and this is my big word, my buzzword as a VO strategist, be effective. You know, there's talent and then there's effectiveness. Mm -hmm. You can be very talented, but if you're not effective as a voice actor, your talent means nothing. So I want to be effective and relevant in the voiceover industry. And from my perspective, the best way to do that is to understand principles of business and marketing. Because I go to, I used to go to these auditions and there'd be like 50 guys that sound just like me, that mm -hmm. are just as talented with similar training and portfolio. So it's like, what's the difference between me and them? How can I Differentiator. separate? You need I, a I can be a differentiator. Differentiator? Yeah, dif differentiator. Dif differentiator. Dif <laughs> How can I dif differentiate myself That's right. yeah. from that? And one thing was to get out of the rat race of in-person auditions and be able to be able to is, is distinguish myself from everybody else, which is mm -hmm. to be functioning more online. And this is before all auditions and, and castings were pretty much online and understanding the financial aspect of it. Because it's like, I mean, I, I'll be honest, George, I've never held like a real full-time job. I've Me never either. worked in an office when I decided I wanted to be a voice actor in 1994 after like 30 years of pursuing this industry. No, I, I have no regrets. I regret various decisions I made along the way, sure. you know, logistical, financial, so, social, and whatever, yeah. but you know, yeah. but the choice to be a voice actor and the second half of my career, I'd say 2011 on when my voiceover career really turned the corner, when I went to that first voiceover conference, shifting out of the v starving artist mentality and into a self-employed, entrepreneurial, self-determining voice actor who is empowered with knowledge and data and metrics mm -hmm. so I can be relevant and effective as a voice actor. The culmination of all that is VO Strategist. Yeah, so when did the VO Strategist launch? Well, I like to think that day in October 2011, the moniker VO Strategist came a few years later, maybe 2015? A few years yeah, after so the that. seed was planted you're like oh man i gotta there's something here so then yeah the, then came along the branding of vo strategy the branding so i'd been teaching at and making appearances at conferences and doing workshops and stuff but i wasn't i wasn't branded but yeah right. vo strategist then you know was developed mm -hmm. with the whole point the logo being a compass mm-hmm because I, as the VO strategist, can help you navigate the voiceover industry because it is so chaotic and so unpredictable. And people coming into the industry have no idea. They don't know what they don't know. That's one of the mm -hmm. biggest challenges of voice actors coming into the industry. They don't know right. what they don't know. My right. job is to help them know what they don't know and then help them get proficient at all the things, business and marketing related. So when it comes time to press the red button and be the artist that they want to be, they have a much better chance. Of being yeah, effective and, who, and, and who do you think are your ideal clients? Are they are they people thinking about voiceover? Are they people that have already taken some coaching and are like really getting serious about it? Where, mm -hmm. where, who, who's are your ideal client? I would say my ideal client are voice actors who have gotten their training, who have produced a demo, who have built their home recording studio, and who have a, a website. So those are like the four pillars. If they have those things in place. What happens most of the time is they'll say, okay, I got my training. I got my demo. I got my website. I got my recording studio. Now what? Mm -hmm. Right. VO strategist is the now what? Now that you've, now that you've equipped yourself, now you can get out there and, and, and be effective. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. so that I'd say that's my ideal client, but I'll work I with anybody it. regardless of experience level. What is the program you'd like to offer to our followers and how do they get started with you? The best way to get started with me is to go to tomdeer.com and look at me as a voice actor. That's T-O-M-D as in David, H-E-E-R-E.com. Because with a couple of notable exceptions, Mary Lynn Wisner, casting director, and a handful of others, to be an effective coach on a performance level or on a business and marketing level, you need to be a working voice actor. So I encourage you to go to tomdeer.com, listen to my demos, Click on my samples. I've got literally hundreds of samples of voiceover work that I've done over the past 25 years at TomDeer.com. Vet me, you know, go to YouTube, 
look and listen and watch my testimonials from students who have been through my program. If after you do your due diligence, go to vostrategist.com, book a free 15-minute consult with me. Let me know where you're at in your voiceover journey, whether it's you're just curious or you're, you're a veteran who needs to reinvent or tweak. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I, I tend to recommend a diagnostic. And that's when we have a one-hour session and I will lift up the hood of your voiceover business and find out what's working and what isn't. Then I will give you a diagnosis and then we come up with an action plan to kind of fill all those potholes to mm -hmm. you know use double analogies and help you you know fill all of those skill and knowledge gaps that you have in your understanding yeah. of the voiceover industry that usually segues into one of two things one people will sign up for my video subscription plan mm -hmm. which is twenty dollars a month for a six month commitment and i have 27 well actually as of just five minutes before i came on to this interview, I recorded my 28th vi VO how-to video, which uh, they all cover every aspect of business and marketing and finances and a little bit of genre exploration, a little bit of e-learning exploration, explainer video uh, exploration, a little audiobook project management. Those are the genre-specific mm -hmm. stuff. And then That's stuff great. about time management and workflow and branding and how to make decisions, you know, what, how, what's the decision-making process in the short term and long term. So there's 20, will be 28 videos. And for 20 bucks a month, like I said, six month commitment, you can watch all of those videos as many times as you want, or you can join the actual mentorship program, which is the free blog subscription plus the video subscription, plus a 30 minute check-in every month. And what mm -hmm. we do is based on the diagnostic and we have all of these things we need to work on, Every, I give you homework assignments in between every check-in session. And then during the check-in session, which is a 30-minute session, I will basically ask you, how many auditions did you do? How's your mission statement going? You know, did you watch that how-to video about how to file your taxes? You know, what questions do you have? What victories do you have to share? What, what defeats do you have to share? What did you learn from those victories or defeats? Mm. And I've had students who have been in the mentorship program for over two years where they're checking in with me regularly to help them, you know, navigate the voiceover industry because mm -hmm. it changes. The voiceover industry changes. You know, George. Yeah. It's it's an ever, oh, yeah. the voiceover success is an ever moving target. And my job is to help you stay on target, stay focused and understand why you want to be a voice actor, re help you remember why you got into this business into the in the first place and not get, you know, dragged into the tide of, of this thing or that state of or thinking- like you know. The Facebook group rants and oh, kind of getting lost into the Facebook group black holes and yes. all that and kind get, of thing. That and getting stuck you. in take audition your, and pray mode and all yeah, the things. Take your all eyes the, off the ball there. Yep. So I'll share this with everybody that checks out georgethe.tech. And I'm going to encourage folks to work with yourself because there are a ton of clients who come to us who have already spent a lot of money. You know, they already have sometimes in some cases a, a full blown voiceover booth and they come to us and they go, I've been auditioning for six months and I'm not booking and I think it's my booth. And then mm -hmm. I go, mm, maybe it's a lot of other things, you know? So, you know, it's, it's great to have these resources. So thanks for your time. I'll make sure people know where to find you and I appreciate you very much. Thanks, George. Thanks for having me on.